Hey everyone, it's Miss Gibson. We're going to read a book today. It's called Habitats of Africa. It's by Bernice Rappaport. This book is nonfiction and it's going to take us on a journey through the continent of Africa. So let's put on our safari hats and get started. We're going to start by opening our book to the front inside cover. Here we can see our big idea. Plants and animals interact with and depend on their environment to satisfy their basic needs. Our science objectives are to identify the natural habitats of Africa, describe the differences and similarities among the natural habitats of Africa, and explain the ways in which the adaptations of African animals to their environments enable them to survive. Then we're going to consider this. Imagine standing in the middle of the Congo rainforest in Africa, surrounded by trees that reach 200 feet into the air. What would you see? What would you hear? Next, you can see our table of contents. It tells us what we're going to read about in our book. The next page gives us some pictures to think about. So you can look at each of these pictures and think about how you feel about them and how you think they're going to pertain to our reading. Next, we have some words to think about. We have habitat, survive, and canopy. Look over these words, think about their meanings, and how they're going to go along with our book. Now for our introduction. When you think of Africa, what do you see? Do you see camels in a desert? Do you see lions on a grassy plain? Do you see monkeys swinging in trees? Africa has all those things. Animals live in habitats. A habitat has food, water, and shelter. This book tells about three habitats in Africa. The first habitat is a desert. The Sahara is a desert. It is hot and dry. It is also sandy. The second habitat is a grassland. It is called the Serengeti Plain. It has large fields of grass. The third habitat is a rainforest. The Congo rainforest is wet and steamy. It has many bushes, vines, and trees. Make sure you take a look at the pictures. They'll show you where each of those things are on the map of Africa. The Sahara Desert. The Sahara is the world's largest desert. The Sahara is as large as the United States. Days are very hot. Nights are very cold. Very little rain falls. The wind blows the sand around. The sand makes mounds and hills called dunes. A dune can change shape as the wind blows. Animals in the desert have ways to live in this habitat. During the day, animals need to hide from the hot sun. Some animals dig holes or burrows in the sand. The burrows help them stay cool. Many animals come out at night. This is when they look for food. You can see our first picture is a snake hiding under rocks or burrowing in the sand to escape the burning sun. Then the next one, scorpions hide under rocks during the day. At night, they catch spiders and insects. And the next picture, the Sahara has rocks and small bushes. The rocks and bushes make good hiding places for small animals and insects. And on the left, you can see the Sahara has large sand dunes. Where do animals get water in the desert? They get water at an oasis. An oasis is a small lake in the desert. The water comes up from below the ground. Trees grow at an oasis. One tree is the date palm. People and animals eat the fruit from this tree. And our insert in this page says it's a fact. Date palms can grow as tall as 100 feet or 30 meters. Dates on date palms grow in bunches. A single bunch can hold between 600 and 1,700 dates. The camel. The camel's body helps it survive or live in the desert habitat. A camel can go for many days without food or water. When it does find water, the camel might drink up to 50 gallons at a time. And if we look at our picture of our camel, we can see that the stomach can store enough water to last for two weeks. The fat in the hump can keep the camel alive when there's little food around. Long eyelashes protect the camel's eyes from blowing sand. Nostrils keep out the blowing sand. Long hair protects the camel from sunburn, keeps the camel's body warm at night. 
and the toes have loose skin between them. This keeps the camel from sinking into the sand. Animals can also find water in a wadi. A wadi is a dry valley. Water collects in wadis during the rainy season. The rain turns the wadis into ponds and small rivers. Small plants grow around wadis. Animals come to eat the plants. A strong rain can wash the plants away. If you look at our page insert here, there's a point. You can reread to find how are an oasis and a wadi alike, and how are they different. Desert plants do not need much water. At night, the cold air makes plant leaves wet. This water is called dew. The plants use dew to live. Some desert plants have long roots. The roots can get water from deep below the ground. In our page insert here, it says everyday science. Go outside in the early morning. Take a paper towel with you. Rub the towel on a few leaves. Check the towel to see whether it is wet from the dew. And we're gonna do that in a few minutes. The Serengeti Plain. Africa has huge grasslands. These places are called the savanna. The Serengeti Plain is part of the savanna. The savanna is warm. The savanna is not as hot as the desert. Tall grasses and some trees cover these lands. The trees make fruit. The trees also make shade. Two trees of the Serengeti Plain. Two trees that are part of the grassland habitat are the acacia and the baobab. It is called the umbrella tree. This is the acacia. Its large branches give shade. Tall animals such as the giraffe feed on its leaves. The tree's fruit is food for the animals. The fruit is a pod with seeds. And the baobab, spiders, bees, and caterpillars live in this tree. The tree's fruit is called monkey bread. Elephants and other animals eat the tree's leaves. Birds nest in the tree trunk and the branches. Many large animals move in herds or groups. Some herds are small. Other herds can have hundreds of animals. The herds move from one feeding place to the next one. If you look at our page insert here, it's a fact. Most of the Serengeti Plain is a national park. The government takes care of the land. Visitors to the park can take photographs. Park guides drive visitors around in buses. And you can see the wildebeest that live on the Serengeti Plain as well. Sometimes an animal moves far from its herd. The animal may become food for other animals. An animal that is hunted and eaten is called prey. An animal that hunts is called a predator. The predator watches and waits for its prey. It moves when the time is right. Then it attacks its prey. And you can see a picture of a lion attacking a zebra. Solve this. Being speedy is helpful for both predator and prey. Speed helps a predator catch its prey. Speed helps prey get away from the predator. Look at the table below. We have three questions. A, which of the three animals is fastest? B, which animal is slowest? C, in miles, how much faster is the ostrich than the lion? So take a minute, look at the picture, compare the running speeds. You've got the lion at 22 miles per hour, the ostrich at 25 miles per hour, and the zebra at 24 miles per hour. See if you can figure out the answers to those three questions. Careers in Science, Naturalist. If you like animals, you might want to become a naturalist. For this kind of work, you need a degree in biology, natural science, or education. Naturalists study the habits and needs of animals. They help people respect animals and their habitats. And you can see some examples of where you could work as a naturalist, like at a nature center, a zoo, or a wildlife refuge. The Congo Rainforest. The rainforest is hot and wet. Rain falls every day. This climate is called tropical. Lots of plants grow in the rainforest. Many animals live there too. The rainforest has different layers. Different animals live in each layer. The top layer is the canopy. Tall tree branches block the sun. The layer below is the understory. The bottom layer is the forest floor. 
So on the next page, in the canopy, birds, monkeys, and other small animals feast on fruits and leaves in the canopy. The understory, lizards and small animals like rats and mice find food in the understory. This layer of the rainforest has small shade trees, bushes, and vines. And on the forest floor, insects and other small creatures make their homes on the forest floor. This layer has small shade trees, bushes, and vines. A rainforest home. Many apes live in the rainforest. Gorillas are the largest apes. They live on the ground. They eat fruits, roots, and leaves. Chimpanzees live in trees. They eat nuts, leaves, insects, and meat. And on our page insert, it's a fact. An adult gorilla can grow to 600 pounds. And you can see a picture of chimpanzees, and they're known as the smartest apes. They make a difference. Jane Goodall spent years studying chimpanzees in Africa. She visited Africa and got a job there. Her job was to watch chimpanzees and take notes about them. Goodall started talking with the chimps by making signs with her hands. She believed that the chimps understood her signs. She wrote many books about how chimps behave. She helped the world find out many things about chimpanzees. Goodall discovered that chimps use tools. Chimps use a twig from a tree branch to poke a hole in a termite nest. They then pull the stick out and lick up the tiny insects stuck on it. A rainforest in danger. The Congo rainforest faces many problems. One problem is logging. People cut down trees. They take away parts of the habitat. Some animals have lost their homes and food. These animals are endangered. Endangered animals may die out. Another problem is hunting. Hunters kill animals. Laws keep some animals safe from hunting. On our page insert, you can see a point to talk about. What do you most remember about the Serengeti Plain and Congo Rainforest? Share your thoughts with some classmates, or in this case, someone else in your home. Conclusion. Remember the camel? The camel lives in the Sahara Desert. In the desert, the days are hot. The nights are cold. There is little water. What other animals live there? Remember the lion? The lion lives on the Serengeti Plain. The plain is warm. Grass covers the land. What other animals live there? Remember the apes? Apes live in the Congo rainforest. The rainforest is hot and wet. What other animals live there? And you can see a chart that gives us habitats and animals and plants that live there. And finally, you've got your glossary that tells you some of our keywords and what they mean. Finally, on the inside back cover of our book, we're going to write in our science journal. You're going to choose one of the following prompts to write about in your journal. And your journal can be a sheet of paper or a notepad, whatever you want. You can type it. So you can make drawings, charts, or other graphic features to help you organize your thoughts. Option one. Identify the African habitat you would most like to visit and explain why. Make a list of questions you would like to answer about the habitat you choose. Remember to make some connections. Option two, review chapter one. In what ways do the plants and animals living in the desert get water? Remember to summarize your information here. And option three, the author included photographs of gorillas and chimpanzees at the end of chapter three. On these pages, she wrote about how the actions of people are affecting the Congo rainforest. Why do you think the author wrote this book? How do you think she feels about this topic? Support your answers with evidence from the text. So here you're going to remember to evaluate the author's purpose and point of view. Okay, we're going to see if there's any dew on our caladium leaf. Let's see. Look, there it is. There's water on our paper towel. Awesome. I hope you enjoyed our journey through Africa. And don't forget, keep writing in your journal, make those drawings, charts, graphs, and don't forget to do some science experiments of your own.